Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. We are going to talk about something that I have to be honest, I don't really know a lot about here in Cabo. And I've always wanted to know a lot about the schools. And I often have clients and, and expats who ask me about the school system here, but I don't have, I don't, my kids are grown. So when my kids got beyond a certain age, I was like, I don't have to think about school anymore. <laughs> so anymore. I stopped, I stopped thinking about school. So, but I was just kind of brainstorming and I, I chatted with my colleague, Denise. We've been on videos before and she's so knowledgeable and she's so, um, she, she's lived here. She has a child who's in the school system here. And I thought it might be fun for us to just kind of talk about some of the options that we have for schools here. So, uh, I want to thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And we're going to talk about all things related to the school system here. And, and Denise did a lot of research. She has a lot of personal experience, but she also did a lot of research that I was very impressed with. And hopefully you will also find it very impressive. And if you find any information in this video helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel. We try to provide so much helpful, like real life information that people who are expats in general or even coming to Cabo um, can use to better their lives. So please give us a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. So Denise, um, let's talk a little bit about the school system here. I, I know that I see a lot of kids. Yeah, Cabo's growing, yeah. so hence the children in Cabo. Yes. yes. <laughs> and we all have the need to find the perfect school for our family. So the school system here is has tons of priority. We have public schools okay. and private schools, okay. um, which are all under the SEP, which stands for Education Public Educational uh, Secretary from the government of Mexico. So everything is um, it's standardized and, and like to the to the educational system in Mexico. So you can change from public to private if you need to. And then your records will go with you. It's That's all right. inter inter yeah, inter yeah, inter yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. Or um, you when you uh, finish school, even if it's just elementary or higher school, you get the degree and the certification from SIP. Okay. Okay. And so you have public and private schools. Um, what are the differences between like a public school and a private school here? Well, first of all, um, the government of Mexico wants to give like uh, free education and which is like and has inclusion to all Mexican and, and foreigners. So uh, expats, talking about expats. Um, so the mainly the difference is the cost. Uh, private schools, they all have a tuition, a no tuition and monthly fee. Uh, public schools, uh, they're mostly free uh, of charge, but they have a minimum cost if, yeah, for uniforms or uh, they're given the school books and things. Okay, okay. Now, do they both speak both languages or what, what about in the public schools is English? Public schools do have uh, English lessons. However, they are not bilingual. Most of the private schools are bilingual, okay. have certifications in international, um, in the, the IB uh, yes. institution or her certifications from Canada and British academies. So you will find a lot of uh, these private schools have very, very good, um, uh, like grades or certifications. Yeah. They're very high rated schools. High rated right. schools. So you as an expat, you're looking for a school, uh, to introduce, uh, the children that doesn't speak Spanish. It will be so much easier to, uh, get into one of these private schools and they will, um, they will easily be, um, transfer to to Spanish, so they will be bilingual. Most of schools uh, have like 
two at least two hours of lessons in 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 English. However, most of schools have half of the day, like take actual lessons in only in English. In English, okay. Yes. It always amazes me how fast kids can learn a different language. It's amazing. I've been trying for like eight years, <laughs> and it's I'm still at like Ola, right? Yeah. So it's terrible, and the kids can pick but it up. It's beautiful. Quickly. You're my kid, which is just during the third grade that she has so many expats as as their like um like her students friends. yeah their friends are expats and she got the english like that and they speak in spanish and so that's so beautiful yeah. to see that they are uh, coming like a joint community when they can change their languages without any problems so Thumbs up for private schools here. They have done an amazing job. In, in the United States, private schools are very expensive. Very expensive. Like college expensive. Okay. So do you have any idea like what the, the average like private schools? Yeah, here? usually admission, uh, the yearly admission goes around $750. Oh, that's not bad at all. Not bad per student. And they have the monthly fee um, from late uh, August to early July. So you only pay 10 months okay. out of the of the 12 months. Okay. And the monthly fee is around 450, okay. 500. It depends on the level of the, um, the grade that you are getting into. Can you talk a little bit about the level of education um, and like technology and things that are available to students who go to a private school here in Colorado. Yeah, one of the things that you, when you choose a school, well, you make an appointment and they can show you around the infrastructure and their level of um, how, how advanced they are. And we have, I've seen classes that they have robotics uh, the smart spaces, like with the green uh, screen, so they the kids made their own videos. And they have smart classrooms, like with smart boards. Um, it's amazing. They all use technology as part of the their student system, but, but also day to day they have to learn how to use computers and stuff. Wow. But. Do you know that we had uh, robotics no. lessons? I didn't like, have that, a chalk and eraser. I didn't have any. You didn't like, have any of that. Yes, so yeah, I'm yeah, amazed right every on. day. Like, yeah, uh, it, the science, uh, science first that I've seen, they're, they're incredible. Yeah. So yeah, we are, uh, I think uh, schools here, as, as we are growing in Los Cabos, they are stepping up and bringing um, very good quality and education to our children. One of the things that Mexico and the private schools here do really well is community interaction and cultural education. So they're not just learning algebra or math or how to spell or read or write. They're learning about the culture here Sorry. and the area here. They're learning about the ocean. They're learning about, you know, can you, can you speak a little bit about that? And then also some of the civic initiatives, like, you know, I know they have, they volunteer and they raise money for different things so talk first about how they incorporate the the Mexican culture in the education and then a little bit about some of the civic initiatives yeah uh, basically what schools do here they the board members are very linked to their PTA uh, PTA are families like like us and they want to get involved so basically they do um, they do get involved in cult cultural events, uh, fundraising for charities or uh, nonprofit organizations. They have even the kids involved in um, creating those events. Um, they have cult cultural events uh, to involve the, the whole community. And also, I've seen that many schools are um, have joined uh, the recycling system in Los Cabos to receive the recycling uh, product. Uh, so every week, each school has a different um, yeah, and 
all of this is created by the PTA and the member, board members of, of the school. So it's really impressive to see all of their, what they're doing and all the funds that they're raising. It's to, incredible. Every month, uh, the schools bring a spokesperson uh, to, to speak about uh, cyber education, nutrition, uh, education in sports, and um, many, many subjects that are, that are influenced to, to us, to it's our so community. Important. It's so important. It's yeah. beautiful to see that all of parents are and, and attending to these kind of uh, lectures, and it's very helpful for all of us. You mentioned that there are several kinds of schools. So we have private schools. We also have like, there are some religious schools like Catholic and Christian schools. There are Montessori schools. Yes. Well, there are uh, the traditional schools. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we have a whole variety of uh, educational systems for for you to choose. Anything you could really Anything, want. Anything, really. Yeah. And I love when I see the little children and they all wear uniforms. That's common here. That's very common. I think that makes them feel inclusive. Like they all wear the same. Uh, mostly public schools have uh, uniforms. Most of the private schools, there was like um, Montessori, for example. Mm -hmm. They don't usually wear um, a uniform. Okay. But, but okay. yeah, I've seen that like, most of the schools have uniforms. Okay. And do they have any uh, extracurricular activities like, I don't know, chess club or, or golf or tennis or surfing or golf. anything <laughs> like that? I don't know. <laughs> they do have tons of stuff. Like, in our days, there was only soccer, that basketball, and that yeah. was it. Yeah. Like, no, now the range of extracurricular activities are wide. And I'm talking about, uh, they have like joint ventures with outside, like private schools, like surf, sailing, um, wow. I don't know, jazz, and music, and art. Flamenco. Flamenco. Yes. yes. Oh, wow. Uh, so yeah, they have tons of activities in the afternoons to choose from. Uh, they all have, they all have a, uh, a small cost, but the, since they're adventurous, the school um, provide a better price. Yes. So yeah, then they have also um, Aikido and Karate, wow. Taekwondo. So yeah, it's, it's so much fun when we see all these kids in, in their uniforms going yes. to yes. Karate class. It's like, um, you know, you're bringing your child, maybe you're an expat, and you're thinking, oh, like, do I want to uproot my children? Are they still going to get a good education? Are they going to have be able to make friends? Are they going to be able to assimilate into the community? Yeah, they are. Yes, totally. They're going to make friends faster than you, probably, because they'll have <laughs> all of their classmates and they'll have so many extracurricular things that they can do. And it will just help them just learn to love this area as much as you do. So I think it's you know, having kids and bringing kids here to grow up, it's, it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful children. place. And also the location is really important. Uh, when we got here uh, and bought the first house, uh, well, I learned from my parents that growing up, it's like the best school is the one that is close to your home. Uh, because they wanted to have like this idea that we don't we don't get in the car and we can walk or go ride a bike mm -hmm. or or pick up all your friends and go close to your school. So that we were thinking about that when we um, we decided on the school for my for our kid, and it's really important also for real estate like the value the capital gain value of the property it's higher in demand when there's a really nice private school nearby uh -huh. that's what uh, families are looking for yes i actually had like recently um a family that was uh just getting in los cabos and before they even look for a house they were looking for a school mm. and they told me like when we find the perfect school for a family we will look around to, 
to to see a house. Once we identify the where school, the school is, then we'll like it. Yeah, I think because that's really it smart. all creates a community, and the people they want to get around with, the people that you want your children to grow, grow up with. Yeah, that's really smart. You mentioned that school is a 10 month uh, school year. So when does it start? When do they let out? And then what's their schedule like throughout the year? Uh, the calendar changes throughout the, uh, the years. But um, for example, this year we're starting uh, in the August 26th. Okay. So it, all, it always starts by the end of August, end of summer or beginning of September. And then we have a break for Christmas, okay. and then we have a break for uh, the Holy Week, okay. and then we uh, leave for summer on July, uh, the first week of July or the last week of June. Okay, that's great. And you also mentioned that the every last Friday of every month. Oh, yes. The kids have out of school so the teachers can have continuing education. Which that, I think it's great. The it's teachers great. are always improving and always using that day to better themselves and prepare their education for the, the upcoming month. That's correct. So yes. if there are any other questions that you can think of that we didn't cover, please feel free to put them in the notes below. Is there anything else you wanted to say about the schools, Denise? Oh, well, I got a list that's really helpful. It tells you, well, the link to the to the private schools that the most recommended schools in Cabo, and also a little brief if you, I don't know if you can add this to, mm -hmm. to the post, it's so helpful and it's so helpful for most experts. But it's, yeah. This was created by expats, so it can give you a good guide. So thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.